In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use symbols in paint code. Symbols allow you to reuse your drawings across a document. They are really great for prototyping user interfaces. In paint code, you can make your symbols parametric and resizable, which means that paint code has the best support for symbols of any drawing app on Mac. Let's start with the drawings that we created in previous tutorials. Chat icon, paper plane icon, and bubble button. As you can see, each drawing is placed on its own canvas. To demonstrate how to use symbols, I'll create a new canvas. This is easy with the contextual menu. It will even offer me the option to automatically create a canvas the same size as the currently selected canvas. In this case, the size of the paper plane canvas. To move the canvas around, I can just grab it by its title like this. I can also easily resize the canvas to any desired size. Okay, so let's say I want to reuse the chat icon on this new empty canvas. To do this, I'll use the new symbol tool from the toolbar. When I activate the symbol tool, a pop-up menu shows me a list of all the canvases available in my document. Each of these canvases can be used as a symbol. Let's pick the chat icon. Now I can easily place the symbol on the canvas like this. And another one. Generally, symbols behave just like any other shape. For example, I can just duplicate an existing symbol and move it where I want. Symbols can also be resized. I'll make this one smaller and this one a bit larger. You can change the attributes of a symbol in the inspector. In the browser, symbols are represented by a recycle icon. The attributes are mostly the same as with any other shape, except for this pop up button here. With this pop-up button, I can change which canvas is linked with this particular symbol. Let's change it so this symbol uses the paper plane icon instead. That's it. Let's go back for a moment. Now, all these symbols use the same canvas, the chat icon. When I change something in the original canvas, the changes are immediately visible in all the symbols that use that canvas. Let's change the size of the bubble in the original canvas. You can see that the bubble also automatically changes in all symbols. Let me undo that. Okay. All this is great. You can reuse your symbols and adjust their size. That's how symbols work in other applications, too. The unique thing about symbols in paint code is that they can be parametric. Let's suppose we want each of these three symbols to be a different color. Currently, all these symbols have the same color as the original, the icon color. I can edit the color and configure it to behave as a parameter, like this. This color will then be available as a parameter in the symbols inspector. Using this pop-up menu, you can easily change the color of a particular symbol. For example, if we want this icon to be green, I can just click here and select a green color, like this. So instead of the icon color that was previously used by this symbol, a different green color will be used. Similarly, I can make this symbol blue, like so. The great thing is, even when I change some parameter of the symbol, like I've just done, the symbol stays linked with the original canvas. If I adjust something in the original canvas, the changes are still immediately propagated to all its symbols. Symbol parameters are not limited to colors. You can make almost anything in your drawing parametric. Let's have a look at how that's done. We'll make the size of this chat bubble parametric by creating a new variable called scale. For this, I have already selected the bubble here. Let's open the transforms box in the inspector. As you can see, the transformation origin is already moved to the center which means that the shape will scale around this point. Now let's create a new fraction variable. Fraction variables can have values from 0 to 1. I'll rename this one scale. Next, I'll link this variable to the scale x and scale y attributes of my bubble. Now when I change the scale variable, you can see that the bubble is resized from its center according to the value of the scale variable. Let's also make sure that this variable will behave as a parameter. As you can see, this is the default behavior, although it can be changed if you wish. Finally, when I select some of the symbols that use the chat icon canvas, there's a new scale parameter available in the inspector. I can easily change it independently for each symbol. Next, let's look at something even more useful. We created something similar to this bubble button in one of our previous tutorials. This bubble button is dynamic. 
So when I change the size of the outer frame, you can see that the drawing intelligently resizes, respecting the bounds of the frame. This resizing behavior is achieved using frames. To learn more about them, make sure you check out our dynamic shape tutorials. This bubble button actually has two variables that behave as parameters. The first is title, and the second is a logical variable called pressed. Now, let's look at how the drawing behaves when used as a symbol. To place the symbol of the bubble button onto my canvas, I'll use the same approach as before. I'll click on the symbol tool, select what I want, let's create another one, and make it a little bit wider. So as you can see, the symbols are resizable in both dimensions. You can also see that the title and pressed parameters are available in the symbol inspector here. Now, when I adjust the title of this first button to something like hello, it is immediately changed. And when I switch the pressed parameter here, you can see the design of the button changes again. By the way, to learn more about how to make your drawings behave like this, check out our variables tutorials. Finally, as before, the link between the symbol and its original canvas is maintained. When I change something in the original canvas, like let's say moving this arrow to the left using my keyboard, the changes are immediately visible in all symbols that use this canvas. Here's one last feature I'd like to show you. By default, all canvases in your document are available as symbols. When I click on the symbol tool, you can see that canvas one, which I just used as a sort of playground, is also available here as a symbol. However, I don't want it there, so let me show you how to remove the canvas from this list. First, make sure you only have your canvas selected. Then all you have to do is uncheck this, allow canvas to be reused as a symbol checkbox in the canvas inspector. After you do so, the canvas will no longer be available as a symbol. Let me show you a more advanced example of what you can do with symbols in paint code. Here we've created a fully parametric analog clock. The first clock at the bottom here is actually a symbol that uses the original canvas at the top. In the inspector, you can change the color scheme of the clock and, of course, the hours, minutes, and seconds, too. When I change the number of minutes, you can see that the minute hand moves around the clock face accordingly. I can also play with seconds and hours parameters. The AM PM indicator is also updated automatically. When I want to change the color of numbers in this first symbol, I can just pick a new color like this. I can also change the clock size. Finally, if I wish to have a more simplified version of the clock, I can just edit the original canvas like this. All symbols now use the simplified version of the clock. One more thing. Let me show you why symbols are a really great feature for user interface prototyping. This here is the entire paint code interface, recreated using symbols. Below, you can see some of the symbols we've used to create the user interface. One of the great things about symbols in paint code is that they can be nested, so you can use symbols inside symbols. Let me show you all the symbols we have in this document. As you can see, there is essentially an entire user interface of paint code, icons, controls, and everything available here. This allows us to prototype new designs and layouts very quickly. Thanks for watching.